uh, SM51 is list of application servers. Very, very important transaction, right? So it's listing the application servers. 00 and 02 in this case. They're both running on Saraswati, right? So that's why it's saying hostname Saraswati. It also tells, here you can figure out which one is the CI by looking at the word NQ in this list. Wherever you see NQ, it's not a full list anyhow, right? Because you don't see message server, even though message server is running there. It's just a hard-coded message, right? But So what you need to focus on is NQ. Um, again, that's what a junior basis admin would do. Now we're going to go a step further. If you look at this little icon here, processes, if you either click on that or if you double click on the row itself, it will log you in to that application server. No matter where you were, even if you were on this server and you double click on it again, it will do like a nested shell in Unix, right? It will just log you into it again. Right? Um, and on once it logs you in, it will do an SM50 transaction for you on that server. So if I do double click 02, this is the SM50 transaction in SM02. Right, and I can tell you that I'm in SM02 if I go to system status 02. Right? Very important if you back out of this back arrow, green back arrow, it brings you back to your previous shell system status 00. If I am nested like this, also in AL08, two sessions will show up. One of them an RFC. Um, if I click on this, users, it does an SM04 on that instance. So if I did 02 and users, it went ahead and did an SM04 on 02. Um, this is SNC status, don't worry about this, right? This is SAP's Secure Network Communication. SNC stands for Secure Network Communication. It's a secure protocol and is inherent in SSO, single sign-on to SAP, SNC. Important piece here is um, uh, these two just release notes. If you click on release notes, it is telling you the kernel information which is running for that instance. So this is the kernel. SAP 700 running on Linux, right? What kernel is running the disk plus work work process in that instance? And if you scroll down, it it has got the patch list, all the patches which have been applied, right, as the kernel has been upgraded, right. So if somehow you have a doubt that, you know, am I running the same kernel, right, kernel patch number 75, sometimes, you know, if you forgot or missed on the other guy, you can check, right, hopefully it's 75, 75 on both of them, right. That's the release notes kernel information. The log is the system log for that particular instance. And we're going to talk about system log separately. Very important transaction of SM21 is the transaction system log by SM21. Okay, SM50 transaction. SM51, we looked at SM50 also in the process of doing so. Um, SM50 
50, we'll just go to once more. SM50 shows you all the work processes. If, see right here, there's one in priv mode, private mode, right? This user is using private memory. Not a good idea, but it's using it. Right, so if I did SM04, It here, Shishia, right? Is it Shishia? It might have been that the work process only is in private mode. Oh, it's no longer, no longer there, so it must have just, by the time I did it, um, it's probably just recycled. So, Work process types, the process ID. Waiting means it's waiting for a dispatcher to dispatch a request to it. Running means it's actively doing some work. Right. And then you can look at what program it's running. It will show under report. What client it's running at, what user is running it. Very important is action. This is where you will typically see the SQL statement running on a specific table. So if you have full table scans going on, you know, unindexed read, you know, some ABAPA right out of college just wrote something, right? It's going against 10 million record table, full table scan, you'll see it here. Is there any rule set for, I mean, like, uh, the session is going in a long off, long off operation, right? And then it will get captured or, or on what basis it will get captured? No, no, what is happening on the system at that time? This is like PS minus EF, right? Or task manager kind of stuff, right? Okay, so it will capture every SQL statement done by that program. No. What is running, what the program is running at the time you issued SM50? That's it. Yeah. However, um, and I don't know if you guys do this. Um, SM04, not SM04. ST04. You guys do this, right? Here you can look at this equal cache. Right? Shared cursor cache. And here you can start looking at, you know, what is in the cursor cache and start ex figuring out what are the expensive SQL statements. So whatever SQL statement we are taking, the uh, SM50, it's just an indication that this is a SQL statement. Nowhere will it be performed. No. But if you do SM50 and you're refreshing it, and that statement is still sitting there? There is something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this could be genuinely you know, long running process, uh, but if you see it sit there and then you basically double click on it, you look at it, you put it in explain plan and you see the cost from the CBO is very high and you know this thing is just crunching through it. It's against the Z, it's a Z program going as the Z table, right? You know, uh, coming out of Infosys in India, right? You go after it right there. <laughs> Uh, so SM50, um, right, so now importantly, um, I'm going to tell you a few things which people don't typically use. There's this little icon here called CPU. You click on it. It tells you the CPU slices which have been used since the system startup by that work process. Typically you will see of the same work process types, the highest number on top and the low and then it will keep coming down of that type, right? This is UPD, that's why this is less, but then, you know, one hour, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 14 minutes, right? Typically what you want to see is you want to see 
at least one or two work processes of that type having all zeros. If you do not, that means you have fewer number of work processes than you require. Because what happens is, when every time it will dispatch to the first available dialog. So that's why this has got the most time utilized. When this is being used, the dispatcher will go here. When this is being used, the dispatcher will go here. Right? And if you see significant amount of time even on the last one, that means there have been occasions when all eight of them were being utilized. That's why you want to make sure that at least you got one or two at the end, which is all zeros, or you have got things only in seconds. Right? If not, and if you're seeing a high number there, that means at some point all dispatchers were utilized and any incoming request coming to the dispatcher was put on hold. I don't have any place to dispatch you. This is like if you're a cab company, right? And you're the dispatcher for the cab company, you at least want to have one taxi cab always available, right? Which you can dispatch. If everyone is on the street at all the time, that means opportunity to grow the business. Um, this time represents, I mean, uh, the particular dispatcher is not available or, or, or in use or on one of his three after this time period? No, no. This has got nothing to do with, this is dialogue work processes. That means this, even the last available dialogue work process, the eighth one, uh -huh. also has utilization on it. That would have been the case only in situations when the previous seven were also utilized. So that is telling me that I was not doing SM66 or SM57 24 hours a day, right? But just by looking at this, I can see what was the high water mark. Okay. How many, how many uh, dialogue processes used and for how long? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so number one, a lot of people don't know about that CPU toolbar icon. And even if you do know and you click on it, how to interpret what it's going to show you, right? And the interpretation lies in the fact that you are looking to see zeros, all zeros, like this. Like I know right now, update two is in milliseconds, right? So even if I add another UP2, it's not going to help my overall system performance, right? Because um, I'm not using even the first one here, right? Um, so right now, just by adding another work process, I'm not going to benefit anyhow in the system. Right? If I want to gain performance, I need to do other things, right? But by adding work process, I'm not going to gain performance. Uh, this little icon here just gives details. If I double click on it, it would tell me what program was running and specifically what select was running. And on that select, what was going on? How many direct reads, how many sequential reads, inserts, updates, roll in, roll outs, right? More details. And you can refresh this. While that stuff is going on, you can continue to refresh it. Right? To get more insight into it. Also, you can look at the log. Very important. Log of that work process. When you click on it, you can look at the log of that work process. Sometimes SAP will ask you to provide this if you are getting some unexplained situation or errors, right? Also, a good basis admin would typically come in here to look at the log in details. 